Hey there team, welcome back to the channel and welcome to my review in progress of Cookie Cutter. I've put a couple of hours into this and we'll be doing a full review forthcoming in the next couple of days. Uh, again, still just figuring out the review rhythm. I'm new to reviewing. It's all very casual and off the cuff, just, you know, a gamer talking candidly with another gamer. I'm starting to enjoy the idea of actually doing this sort of split review so you can capture my first impressions while I'm still kind of enamored with all the new shiny stuff in a game. And then we can settle in for a bit more of a final review once the luster has come off of it. Cookie Cutter is actually really good so far. I'm enjoying it. I'm relatively new in the Metroidvania space. You know, we looked at Last Fate and that sort of stuff. That was going for more Souls-like. This is much more traditional. But so far, broadly speaking, just to front load it, yeah, this is really fun and I'm enjoying it a lot. The art style is kind of unique in modern day. However, it's clearly throwback to things like Earthworm, Jim, Boogerman, <laughs> if anyone knows that one. But even like the Ren and Stimpy cartoons as well. This sort of edgy, gross out, ugly style, but intentionally so. Like, again, I'm not saying that the game's not wonderful, like all the animations and art is really beautiful, but like the main chick is a dumpy, frumpy little rockabilly come punk trucker looking chick. And they even joke about it with some of the characters in the game. <laughs> going, I didn't think you were a chick. <laughs> I thought you are just some ugly dude trucker. Right, so there's some self-awareness. The game knows exactly what it's doing. But yeah, it's packed with a whole bunch of, you know, uh, I, uh, juvenile is probably the correct term, but I'm not trying to be prudish. However, pearl clutches on either side of the aisle are going to crack the sads about this game, which is fascinating. It's uh, it's definitely going for edgy, offend everyone kind of humour, and I, I like that. Good for them in current year as well. There's a whole section of bad guys called, literally called dickheads, and they've just got giant throbbing dickheads. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've come across some secret rooms with some xenomorph giant, giant penis dudes. It's well more on the nose than Geiger, but you know, at the same time, a lot of a lot of sort of basically vagina and penis jokes. I mean, Jesus, you've, she's got a robot pun named Regina, or Regina, I just suppose if you want to pronounce it that way. That uh, talks to her during cutscenes as her sort of side character helper. <laughs> I've come a long way since the pixie that helps Link. And even when it's talking to her in like dialogue scenes and that, her, her crutch is lighting up as she talks. It's I, I find it funny because it's cheeky, right? So if you're if you're a prude, you're not going to like it or anything like that. But uh, I can only assume what with the psychopaths that are terminally online these days are going to try and take this and run with it and say that it's trying to say something. It's not trying to say anything. It's just edgy and good for it. All of this art and animation, all that, that aside, is really, really cool. The combat and the platforming, specifically the platforming, is actually really tight and fun, and, and I'm enjoying that. Like, it's, it's fun to platform around, and I've unlocked a couple of abilities. You know, your double jumps, your air dashes, that sort of stuff. And the game is meeting those out at the right time, right when you need them, right when you want them. And there's a bit of back and forth, you know, now you can go back and double jump up and that sort of stuff. I feel like the levels are a little bit bloated for what's in there. I do notice that in some of their marketing, they were kind of bragging about how large the levels are. And I, I feel like maybe they've kind of overdone it a little bit, but that's just that's just nitpicking. But the, the platforming is definitely solid. It's, um, it's starting to ramp up where I'm at at the moment, right? Not necessarily super difficult, but it's actually giving me a bit of a challenge pushing back. The combat's cool, but with all of this wonderful art and animations on both sides of the attacks, it's hard to kind of catch telegraphs in there. It's got a parry system and a dodge system. The dodge iframes are so incredibly generous. I think you'd be almost insane to try and parry because the parry, like I said, it's hard to tell because the screen kind of gets too busy. And that's a, that's a whole, whole conversation about telegraphs and how they should stand out, that sort of thing. A great example, you know, like the Batman Rocksteady games, right? The giant bloody things over his head, the lightning bolts for counters, right? That's not necessarily in-universe. That's kind of a UI meta element. It stands out. And a lot of these animations don't really stand out. I'm not saying that they're bland or anything like that, but they do mesh together because it's all sort of in-universe. So when you do end up in some of these arena screens where you're fighting like bloody six dudes stacked on top of you and they're starting to initiate parries and the parry is actually quite specific in its timing it becomes to a point where you, you after you start getting chain bashed you're not going to do it you're just going to dodge so again like many of these games I, I feel like and I don't necessarily want to get into it too much but I feel like they take the parry system because it was cool in souls like but 
what they need to do is implement the parry system in something like, well, to mention it, Batman as well. Because a lot of these games, they kind of drop the ball when they do it because you can dodge or you can parry and one's just going to be more powerful than the other. And it's usually the dodge because it's iframe dependent. So you just don't parry because there's no real reason to do it. But again, I don't necessarily want to dwell on that. And the reason I mentioned the Batman thing is because in that, they're not necessarily interchangeable. The parry is something you rely on. Arguably, it's a parry fighter. The core of what made the Batman games great was that you would parry so much and it would make you feel cool. It was never really difficult to parry. It was almost part of the combo chain and you would occasionally dodge specific enemies because they had specific weaknesses. Anyway, that's, an, that's a whole other thing. So yeah, platforming is really good. Art's really good. Animation, uh, you can get lost in the combat a little bit, but you know, that could be me still trying to find my rhythm as well. Uh, the story setup seems kind of cool. You know, we've got a cool opening cutscene and that. You're kind of, you're a robot chick that's been made by your creator. But then it goes a bit kind of, I, I'm not necessarily, I'm, I'm all for edgy. I'm all for risque. I'm not 100% on board with the whole the creator and her enamored robot that loves her almost like a pet are lovers. It's got some incest vibes. It's got some white lady Labrador vibes. It's a bit weird. But I guess that's your motivation. You know, you essentially get your head bashed in and you want to go on your sort of revenge arc and go and save your creator, that that sort of thing. Pretty uh, meat and potatoes set up, but that's all you need in a game. And it's good to see that they're just, they're not overcomplicating it. There's upgrades and there's currencies and all that sort of stuff, but it's very few and far between. You kind of slot the upgrades against a battery capacity limit. This is stuff that we've seen before many times. One thing I am worried about is because the upgrades are very rare and they're fairly expensive, which is fine because you don't need them. The game stands on its own without the extra 25 health or whatever. The problem is that it's starting to pop up with like crafting mats, like you need X bloody bore pelts. You need four bore pelts to uh, unlock this thing, which I think kind of flies in the face of what makes a Metroidvania kind of work and kind of tick. You know, it's starting to get back into that crafting RPG grind mechanic. And I'm wondering that if I want to get some of these cooler upgrades and if the game starts bottlenecking me later on, it's going to force me to go back to grind like sub boss elites in specific areas. And I don't know if I'm really on board with that as a discipline as for a Metroidvania, just forcing me to grind the same area, hoping for a random ball pelt drop. But yeah. So far, so good. It's, you know, it's it's good. It's it's serviceable. It's great. One standout thing that's happened recently is I got an upgrade where I can sort of throw out a huge punch. And it doesn't really do damage, but it controls enemies. And there's a lot of environmental like buzzsaws and things on the walls and the AI is pretty dumb, but intentionally so. We can sort of belt them into environmental traps and play around that. So that's actually some really cool interplay that I find complements the combat loop or even just dealing with enemies, knocking them off ledges, knocking them up into walls and uppercutting them and all that sort of stuff. So that's actually probably one of the more standout things. But yeah, everything's really good about it so far. Uh, I can't see why it would get worse. So I'll pop a few more hours into it and I'll come back to you with a review. But for now, this is pretty cool. It's on track to be a good recommendation. Anyway, team, might just leave it there for the time being. I'll catch you guys on the next one.